All right, so welcome to the lunchtime video for the JNCIE SP. Last video, we just took a diversion and set up the cron job, kept uh, careful notes for how to do it again. Hopefully the, the uh, virtual machine doesn't crash and I lose the notes, so I might want to maybe back them up. Um, I can throw them in the, I already uploaded the video though, so it would have been nice to include them on the, the video. Why don't I just go back to the video and uh, and add them on there and then add them to my notes because I'm just worried that if it crashes, I will lose those notes and they are going to be pretty valuable. So I'm going to pull up my channel here and I can share my screen and show this. All right, so I'm sharing screen two here. So let's pull up the channel. Here it is. Now I'll go to the studio videos and then the last video here where I just took a diversion to, yep. So I'll write down my notes, which are here. And then I'll, in addition to that, I'll add them to my documentation on Google Drive. All right. Okay, so just add them here and then add them here and click save. Perfect. Okay, so now they're they're backed up. Anything happens to that VM and I lose the notes I have there, I can just go back to the video where I set up initially, get a tutorial for how to do it, and then see that in the notes. Okay, so now hopefully we're gonna start off this video with some really good news. The good news being that our cron job that we spent the whole last video setting up works. So we'll be able to tell that really nice and easy. The cron job will have worked if we go right to the CLI prompt and it's, yep, so it's at the login prompt. So yep, this means that it, it recently uh, rebooted. So we're not gonna have the, uh, the same kinds of issues we had before because we're gonna be doing each of our study sessions with a fresh reboot that happened 15 minutes ago and only takes six minutes to complete. So it'll be up for, um, it'll be up uh, and, and fresh and ready to go and we won't be encountering that CLI hang hopefully <laughs> that's the idea anyway all right so let's check the other three make sure that they're sitting at the command line the same way router one was yep so all right perfect so our, our cron job is good to go um the lab is going to be as ready to go as is possible for the lunchtime video and the after work video Okay, so now we can pick off where we left off uh, two videos ago. Um, so I'll, I'll need to refer to my notes for that because that was a long time ago. Ah, so it looks like, yeah, I, I was working on um, troubleshooting addressing issues for ISO addresses instead of IP addresses. I get plenty of of uh, practice with that already, so that's not going to be major. Um, I was looking into ISIS area MIB messages that you can grab using SNMP. Um, I found those in the trace options. So let's uh, get the title ready for this next video. Okay, and let's get the tags. 
So, yep, now we can add these, these other tags back uh, and we'll change it to be OSPF. So, yep, we can add the Linux, the IGP tags, the um, troubleshooting OSPF, ISAS, all those kind of tags. Uh, and hopefully this will be the last video in this series. So I, I don't remember what I was doing, but let's just take a look at what configuration is on all of these and I hopefully can get a good sense for it. Uh, let's just take a look at the configuration on, on the loopback interfaces because I do know that I was troubleshooting addressing issues for family ISO. So those addresses are going to be on the loopback addresses. Okay, so it's coming back to me now. Um, I'm just working on converting all of these over because right now they're extended NET addresses, network identity title addresses, with an extra four characters in the area portion, which is whole area. This whole portion is going to be defining the area. But uh, this portion defines, it doesn't define this portion is mandatory to have 49. Um, so yeah, so, so that's what I was doing. You can see I finished that on routers one through three already. So I've just got one more router to go. And uh, I believe I had a monitor start set up on router two to look at the file. Yep, so we'll have that running and then we'll fix the final NET, family ISO address. Yep, so we've got local area is 49.000, but the area currently configured here is gonna be this 49.000.0172. So let's actually put a filter on, on this. Okay, so we'll do a monitor start and we'll do a match on that here. Perfect. So uh, I'm thinking this will pop up. I'm actually kind of surprised it's not popping up. I wonder if there's, now there should be level two adjacency. So let's take a look at that. Yep, so we, we've got valid level two adjacencies. We've got one with Router one. Now remember, there won't be a level one adjacency because those are just for intra area uh, topologies. Uh, inter area, they have to be level two. So if you don't have a matching area, it's going to need to. It, it's only going to be capable of forming a level two adjacency. But if the areas are matching, it can form a level one adjacency as well as a level two adjacency. Uh, yeah, so, so if, if we take a look, uh, let, me, let me demonstrate that. So show ISAS adjacency. We can see router one and router two. If I do a show ISIS on router one and I do, let's see here, overview. Yeah, so overview, pipe, match area ID. So we can see the area ID is 49.000. So let's do that same thing on router three. 49.000, same area ID. But let's do a show ISS adjacency. And uh, let's just show the adjacency between router one and router three. So we'll show a show in description, pipe match R3. And then we'll do a show ISCS adjacency and it will be, oh, I thought we could narrow it down by the, by the uh, uh, interface, but 
nope, we can only do it by the system ID. So let's figure out the system ID for R3. Ah, here it is. So let's narrow it down so that we only see the adjacency between router three and router one. Oh, and it looks like there is no, there is no adjacency to router three. Oh, even though, even though we can see that there, there in fact is a, yeah. So this, this is, this is, I mean, this is kind of a, a sidetrack. It looks like the system ID is actually this value. I, I'm surprised it's that value because if we go over here, we can see sys ID, which I would think means system ID, maybe it does not, is the value I used. But I bet you if I were to paste this in, uh, maybe take out the abbreviations, Oh, huh. so yeah, I guess I'm not sure. Oh, I see. Maybe it's the system ID is, aha, yeah. So the system ID gets converted to the, the host name somehow, which uh, I'm not complaining about, I like that. But you can see the ultimate point I was making is true. If I go back to my command, where I look at the overview and filter it out by the area ID, and uh, I do that to show IS, IS, IS adjacency on here as well. And then show um, IS, IS overview, pipe match area ID. We can see that the areas match, but we still have a level two adjacency between the routers, even though the area matches. So level two can be formed between either areas that match. Well, it's not an either or. It can be formed both between areas that match and areas that don't match. But level one can only be formed across areas that match. So. And we can see that is evident on uh, runner four because we've only got level two adjacencies. And then even on these as well, you can see to level four, you've got a level two adjacency only. Okay, so that's hopefully really clear and intuitive. So let's finish up level four and, uh, and let's have, um, Let's have the, yeah, let's, let's have the monitor stop and then we'll do another monitor start, but we'll match for our router four now because we know that the system name is, is just gonna be the, the plain text host name. It's not gonna be a, um, you know, this SNPA, whatever that means. And it's not gonna be the um, sys ID, it's gonna be, the actual host name. So, yeah, now we can see, aha, so we've got um, errors here. So there's no matching areas. So, yeah, and we can see that this error message is triggered right after it receives a level one ISIS hello message on the LAN local area network. So there's an error every time, every time you have a level one hello being sent out, you receive an error because they're not in the same, they're not in the same area. So really the proper way to do it is to disable those, those hellos on, on level one. So let's do that before we fix it. Yeah, so let's disable ISIS on this level, level one, because we've got a 
mismatched area for this one, but we're going to presume that that's what we want. We just want this to be in a different area. So we don't want these constant messages that, that have those errors because we're getting level twos. So, yep, and it looks, it looks like everything's good. So let's go back and look at the improvement. So before we disabled those messages, we were getting a level one ISIS hello from router four. And then we were getting these error messages. So we were kind of clogging up our link with unnecessary traffic because we don't want that level one adjacency because they are in different areas. And that's, we're presuming for now, intentional. We only want a level two adjacency. So you can see how much nicer it looks after I disabled those level one hellos. We no longer get those error messages and we only get these level two hellos which are important that we still get those too because if we disable those, it would not reset the dead interval timer and it would lose the level two adjacency. So hello messages not only form new connections, they also reset the hold timer. And uh, if that hold timer is not reset, it loses the adjacency. So they're not only used to form adjacencies, they're also used to maintain adjacencies and to determine uh, when an adjacency is no longer necessary. But that's not necessarily what a hello message does. It's just what happens if you no longer receive hello messages. Okay, so let's see here, we've got Yep, so, so that, that I think is, is good enough. So let's just uh, change this to be in the same area and the same identifier. And then I think that'll be enough to close out this topic. I'll mark this as done, I'll upload the video, and then I'll get started on the next topic. Okay, so let's keep looking at our trace logs, which I accidentally um, shut down. But um, hopefully we'll get some now. We won't really see what happened. Well, I can always do a rollback and then a, and then a recommit. Okay, so now we're gonna have more information than we would ever need. Yep, so we're still getting these because I rolled it back, but, oh, well, this is the designated router mismatch, so it held on to that from the old area. So hopefully it's gonna get that worked out. Let's do a show ISS overview and uh, see if we can get a better sense for that trace log message about the designated router. Let's do a pipe match ESIG for designated. Okay. Our OUT for a router. Okay, so I don't see anything about the designated router. Let's try. Ah, let's try backup information because that's what the designated router. Yeah, let's try coverage. Nope. SPF. 
results. Okay, so I can't tell which is the designated router, unfortunately, at least not easily. It looks like we've got all the interesting messages now. It's, it's worked itself out. So let's see how that has changed. So we've got designated router mismatch. So it looks like it was changed. It needs to, okay, but these no-nos, I'm not sure what that is all about. All right, so I think we're good to go. Um, I wish I could figure out what the designated router was easily somehow. So let's try to figure that out. Uh, I might need to do a, a Google search, but I think it's it's worth doing that. Yeah, let's, let's maybe the layer two map has it. Nope. I'm not sure what spring is. I've never heard of that. Aha, so I found it. I, so to, to find the designated router for your topology, the command is show ISIS interface, and then you'll get one, two, three, four, five, six columns. And then on each row, you'll see the interface that is participating in ISIS on your router. And for that interface, it'll tell you the designated routers for both level one and for level two. So in this case, on this interface, the designated router is router three. Then we've got router one. And now we've got an interesting scenario on the final interface, gigabit ethernet interface that is participating in ISOS on this router. It's interesting because the level one DR is different from the level to DR. But hopefully the adjacencies are now all formed and we'll have a level one and a level two adjacency. Oh, but we can see we've got an interesting situation on GE002 where we've only got a level two adjacency, even though presumably the areas now match. Let's check that. So show ISIS overview, pipe match, area ID. Yep, so the area definitely matches, but for some reason we still only have a level two adjacency. So I think the reason for that is, is I just forgot to remove that disable command. So let's do a show configuration protocol ISIS, pipe display set relative. And yep, you can see, I just simply forgot to remove this command. So let's remove that now so we can get the level one adjacency to come up. Before we remove that though, let's do a show, or let's do a monitor start, filtering out for a router four, and let's see that 
adjacency come up in our monitor increment. Now remember, we're not flagging everything. Let's, let's do a monitor stop first and take a look at what's being flagged. So here's all our trace option flags. So we're only flagging for packets, hello, route, and error. Let's take a quick look at what other flags there are available, just to make sure we're, we're looking at the best ones. So LSP could be interesting because, yeah, let, let, let's enable that. So let's do set. Set flag, LSP, turn on that extra one. Let's see what other ones might be useful. Um, yeah, let's look at SPF events as well. And uh, state transitions. All right. Uh, let's look at normal events too. And I'm not sure what, what this is, adjacency SID. Uh, we'll just leave that out for now. And um, yeah, so, so let's do a show pipe display set relative. So we're gonna be packets, hello, routes, errors, LSPs. Oh, right, because LSP means something different in ISIS. I was confused because I thought we, I told it to trace MPLS label switch paths, but we're going to be tracing ISIS link state packets, which I'm surprised is not covered by this packets here. I'm surprised there's a separate one, but um, let, let's, let's uh, look at generation as well. Okay, but I think that'll be it. So commit and quit. Okay, and then we'll monitor and we'll filter our monitoring down to router four. Okay, and now we will enable level one. And then the other thing I'm pretty curious to see um, is if that, uh, if I do show IS, IS, IS interface, if we get a, um, another, if, if these DRs match after level one is enabled, if the, if the level one, yeah, if, if this updates to match what the level two one is, I, I, I'm curious to see if that will happen or not. Um, I'm guessing it will, but um, I, think, I think it's always a good idea to, to just look at what happens and not make any guesses because you don't want to um, take more seriously a result that confirms your guess. You want to be able to consider a result that you wouldn't necessarily have expected to be as valid as a result that you did expect. Okay, so Let's see here. We're going to do a, um, oh, I forget. I forget what I was just doing. Uh, oh, right. So we're going to go edit protocols ISIS and then delete level one disable. Top, show pipe compare, commit and quit. Okay, and then look at the trace options. Aha, so we've got new things happening. We'll just let it kind of print out and then we'll do a, a monitor stop. We'll go back through them and then we'll do a uh, show ISIS interface and check the um, 
designated runners. So I think now is a good time. It looks like it's balanced out and uh, we are getting level one hellos now when we're getting them without the error. So because they are now in the same area before when we were getting the area, the errors, they were in different areas. So let's do a monitor stop now that we're getting those level one messages error free. Okay, so you can see before we had level two hellos being absorbed, everything looked normal and good. Clear pattern to, to the messages there. Um, then we had this special message here. So we received a level one hello for the first time. So it's a new adjacency since that's the first one we received. So we've got to trigger a shortest path first calculation and change our topologies now that we have a level one adjacency. So did that successfully. So it went from new to initializing. Then of course we received our regular old level twos as normal. Not gonna change that. So now we got a new neighbor. So now we're receiving LSPs from that neighbor. Link state packets. So kind of like an OSPF, you would get a map of the topology and all the links in that pockets, LSA, link state advertisements. Well, you get the same thing in ISIS, but they're called link state packets instead of link state advertisements. So this tells you all the link states, the costs, because it's the shortest cost, shortest path first. So it's got to calculate the shortest path using this information here that it just received. So, yep, and then we get the TLV, which I'm, I'm not sure about. And then we get the, the traffic engineering database. So yeah, it all looks pretty straightforward. Oop, we do have a designated router mismatch, which we noticed before. Um, aha, but here we can see, we changed the, the designated router on uh, router, router two for the level one adjacency is now router four. So I'm willing to bet now 99% that we will see the same designated router being used for the level two adjacency between router two and router four. And I'm willing to bet another 99 to one odds that it's going to be router four. So, okay, so yep, we added the new, now we got the metric too, so. Okay, so now we're back to, oh, we've got a few more LSPs that need to come in to, to make sure those calculations are, are good. But you can see down here, now we're back to the same pattern of traffic that we had up here when everything was stable. Um, but instead of having one, two, three, four, five messages before it, it just repeats on a, a loop. It looks like sometimes it only has f uh, four messages. I'm not sure why there's an extra message sometime, but now we will have um, one, two, three, four, five, six, seven, eight messages, uh, which, which is double the, the number of messages when there's four. I would be willing to bet we'll see five messages. We'll see 10 messages at times as well, but I'm not sure why. So everything looks really good. I think it's really easy to understand what's going on. Let's take myself up on that bet. Yep, so, so I, I won the bet. The uh, level two adjacency now has a matching DR as the level one adjacency before it just had stale leftover information from when it had a level one adjacency. So it wasn't even used anyway because there was no level one adjacency, but the output in here um, left that old information 
in the buffer and it needed to be updated when we did have a level one adjacency, but it just did that seamlessly automatically behind the scenes. Not that we needed to worry about except making sure that those level one hellos were being sent out. Okay, so I think this is pretty much all I need to go over for this. So I, I'm willing to, to say this is complete. Um, yeah, and I don't think there's any notes that are, are going to be needed for this too. So um, yeah, let's just, um, let's mark it complete. So address issues are, are now done. So yeah, and then, then let's think about the next topic in this video. Um, maybe not uh, go to it, but this topic, I think I kind of want to, um, if there's any topic I want to shortchange, um, it's probably going to be this one because I am kind of worried what would happen to my lab if I created a routing loop. Um, because there's a lot of uh, power in it. So, and it's already, it doesn't run hot, but it's, it's kind of warm. So if I just have a routing loop going on it, um, that could be a problem. Um, but um, I, think, I think this will be mostly theoretical. We'll just do some reading um, and, uh, and maybe leave it at that. Um, so I think what I'm going to do is, is create the, the file, so notes, and then create the tags. Okay, so it's going to be routing loop. Okay, and then the first video, so we can have um, different tags. We can have IGP. Yep, so all these tags can be fine. All right, and then I think I'll stop this video for now, but I'll, I'll hopefully within uh, five minutes be able to start a new one and just have a short 10 minute video to the routing loop and then devote the after work video to the routing loop topic and hopefully finish two complete topics in one day. So thanks for watching and I'll see you in the next video.